Imagine if you could take a trip to Barcelona, Spain, and raise money for a good cause, all without the transatlantic flight, the jet lag, um, you know, or even having to deal with the expense. Well, Gloria Ferrer has found a way to make that happen with the 22nd annual Catalan Festival, which is happening July 19th and 20th at the winery in Sonoma. And I am fortunate to have with me here tonight at Toot Suite, Eva Bertrand, who is the Vice President of Marketing at Gloria Ferrer. And uh, she's going to, she's also from Barcelona, Spain. The I resident Catalan <laughs> yes. at the winery. <laughs> exactly. So she's really got the inside scoop on uh, what happens at these events and is going to fill us in tonight. But I want to remind you of how Toot Sweet works um, and let you know that um, I'm hoping you're obviously logged in at www.tootsweet.com right now, tuning into the show. But we want you to tweet your questions to at Gloria Ferrer. That's Gloria, G-L-O-R-I-A-F-E-R-R-E-R. -E -E and we hope that you're going to continue to ask us questions or chime in with different things because we're actually going to give away two tickets to the Catalan Festival for Sunday, July 20th to uh, the folks that tweet us and tell us why they're interested in attending. So I hope that you all do that tonight. We look forward to reading your tweets and we'll be taking a look at them throughout the show. So let's get going here. You know, tell us a little bit, Ava, about Gloria Ferrer and what the significance of the Catalan Festival is. So Gloria Ferrer is owned by the Ferrer family, and they are from Barcelona, Spain, and that region that is uh, where Barcelona is the capital is called Catalonia, uh, the, or the Catalan region, and that is in the northeast of Spain. It borders the France and the, the Mediterranean. So as um, that region is... is uh, it's part of Spain, but we have our own language, which is Catalan. We have our own cuisine and a lot of seafood, of course. But um, it's the Ferrers, when they bought uh, Gloria Ferrer, they decided that they wanted to share uh, the Catalan the Catalan culture with their new friends in Sonoma. And um, at the time, actually, nobody was cooking Catalan cuisine, so it was very challenging to show that. But with the years, we've, uh, we've been able to assemble that. So when was the first Catalan festival, and when, how does that relate to when Gloria Ferrer was established? So, uh, so the Ferrer's bought the uh, property where uh, Gloria Ferrer is at in Sonoma, in the Carreras region, which is uh, kind of between the racetrack and the town of Sonoma. <laughs> and uh, that was bought in 1982. And uh, the, the Ferrer's bought that property with the idea to build a winery in, in America, and it was a, a dream that um, the founder of Gloria Ferrer, Jose Ferrer, had had already in the 30s. And they, uh, he went prospecting with uh, different lands in the U.S. To, to build that winery. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to because he died mm -hmm. in the Spanish Civil War in oh, the 30s. Wow. But Jose, um, as he grew up, uh, found a way to fulfill his father's mm -hmm. dream. And that dream led him to Sonoma. And that led him exactly to the property that we have. And in 1982, the property was bought. And in July of 86, the winery opened to the public. So the first Catalan... And you were there. I was there. <laughs> She's was, been there since the beginning. I know. I was a yeah. toddler. Was, I'm very <laughs> exactly. precocious. <laughs> exactly. You were just a teen, you know. <laughs> very precocious. So the, the winery opened in July of 86. So the first Catalan festival was in July of 87 to commemorate the anniversary of the opening of the winery. And, wow. and we've been doing it. Not every year we stopped for a few years, but we've been doing it now continuously since uh, 1997. Wow, that's incredible. In the current format. So. And the Ferrer family is still very active in Spain, making wine. And very much so. So the Ferrer family, other than... They're from, from Barcelona, but they have other wineries. Okay. And one very well-known is Freshenet. It's a sparkling wine in the, in the black bottle called Cava. And, but other wineries also. They have actually 18 wineries around the world in four different continents. But I have to tell you that wow. Gloria Ferrer is very close to their heart because Gloria Ferrer is the, the wife of the patriarch of Jose Ferrer. So... When you so you've heard that, people. Gloria Ferrer is actually a person. Yes, and yeah. she's alive and well. You don't need to be dead <laughs> to have a winery name after you. And they're very much involved in the business. They, they live above the winery uh, in, of Freshenet, just south of Barcelona. And they come to Sonoma often. 
Wonderful. And in fact, um, the Ferrer family is co-chairing the Sonoma um, Wine Auction Weekend uh, this year, uh, over Labor Day weekend. So for those of you who may be looking into something to do then, if there are still tickets available, uh, you'll want to attend because the Ferrers are flying out for that and, and are co-chairing. So that will be very cool. Well, wonderful. So this sounds like a really, really fun event. There's so much going on. And again, please tweet us your questions or tell us why you want to attend the Catalan Festival at Gloria Ferrer on Twitter. But, you know, you, it's like entertainment all day yes. from noon to four. It is. is. that correct? It's, a, it's action packed. <laughs> it's action packed. It's fun, you know, all right. fun. It's almost like there's so many things happening that um, you just want to be everywhere. But I would say that to me, the word that describes best the Catalan Festival is the colors and the smell. It's well, and so why do these festivals take place in Spain? Maybe we start there, you yeah. know. Why do you have these festivals? Well, in, in, in Spain, we do a lot of festivals. <laughs> but each town, each town has its own holiday. Mm -hmm. And usually it's related to a saint. Okay. And the town picks that saint as being their own saint. And the, the church is with that saint. So then when that, every day has a saint, like today is St. John Day, uh, yes. June 24. Yes. Tomorrow is June 25th is Santa Eva Day. Oh, well, look at this. It's a celebration for you. <laughs> so um, so then each town, will, uh, during that day, they will have a, 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 a sort of a party. And typically, there's a parade where we, there's a, in Catalonia, we have the Gigants, which are these huge puppets made out of paper mache that they carry it on someone's shoulder. And they go around the, the different, the the streets and they get um, they dance and then there's also the big head which are, it's just one person with one big head uh, in the and but there's also music there's fireworks it's, you know that is the it's called fiesta mayor it's the, the big it's called the big party wonderful yeah. that's so cool and I think you just saw on your screen a picture of the gigants which are actually at Gloria Ferrer every year and tell us uh, yeah. who made those for you so the there's, there's several uh, famous places for the jagans and every town has its own jagan that represents that town and one of the famous town is called mataro which is just north of barcelona coastal town and an artist from mataro was in berkeley and uh, he was doing his uh, studying in berkeley and he approached us to uh, if we would be interested in him building a, a a queen and a queen which is who they are is is uh, King Ferdinand, who, who was Catalan, sure. and Queen Isabella, who was the Queen of, the, of Castile. Okay. And that's who they represent. And if we were interested in having them to be uh, built, so we did. And now we have this big giant puppet. <laughs> that's wonderful. And so when do they come out during the festival? Like what's At a certain time of the okay. day. We have, it's usually in the morning, early in the morning, because uh, we there's a... Carneros is known for its wind, very good for the grapes, but not good for Jagans. <laughs> so in this case, early in the morning would be noonish. Yes. So it's at, the, it's at the beginning of the party, and yes. uh, there's a special music that always plays when the Jagans play. So we play that. It's with the garallas and sort of some instruments. Okay. It's recorded. No, yes. We don't have any that plays live. But, but uh, and they just sort of parade around, and some of the kids get all you see them very frightened, and some of them just want to get very close to the jagan, and <laughs> somebody's in sight. <laughs> well, and beside the jagans, which is obviously very ceremonial and totally fun, um, there are tons of cooking demonstrations and educational seminars going on, correct? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, sort of it, Different things happen in different stages of the of the festival. We, if anybody has been at Gloria Ferrer, we have this beautiful um, vista terrace, and then we take over actually the entire parking lot as well, and we set up uh, stages there. Mm -hmm. So that's where some of the cooking demonstrations happen. We also have performances by Sol Flamenco, which okay. is the, the dance flamenco, and then Marcou, which is a mix of Spanish and South American influenced music, kind of more modern. Beautiful. And we'll, we'll play a little of their music for you a little bit later in the show. Yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun, great yeah. energy. And then there's, you just walk around and sample food and wine. And then we do uh, grape stumping as well. And that, the one that was able to squeeze the most juice wins. 
<laughs> so in my understanding, because we want to tell you how to purchase tickets, obviously, but that um, the tickets for the Grape Stomp on Sunday are almost sold out. I think there's room for one more couple when I looked uh, today. So you better hurry up and get online at www.gloriaferrer.com to be able to purchase the tickets, not only for the Grape Stomp, because you need to have a ticket either for general admission, um, which is $70 if you purchase it in advance. Um, before the festival happens on July 19th and 20th. Um, or you can purchase what is called the Bubble Lounge. And um, let's talk a little bit about the differences between those two offerings. So general admission ticket gets you two wine tickets, um, complimentary food uh, samples, a logo flute, and of course all of the entertainment during the day. And if you want to purchase in the Grape Stomp, that's a small additional cost to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but then the Bubble Lounge, um, you want to tell us a little yeah, bit about so that? So the Bubble Lounge is actually, think of it as a reserve area where you have not just a reserve, um, you know, you have actually seats to, to sit, that everybody has a table and a chair to sit, or tables and chairs, but there's also special wines that are being poured there, nice. and some special food that is also poured there. So... But you can still hear the music or you can go out and get very close to the performance if you want. And then you can always go back to the Bubble Lounge, which is where a lot of people do. That sounds really great. So a little few extra perks to go to the Bubble Lounge. You know, you get some special wine, some premier reserve stage seating, you know, all of those things that um, are probably worth the little extra cost of only $90. Yeah. So, and that's in advance. Uh, so. Tell me, um, what is the price, Ava, if you show up at the door the day of the festival? So it goes, uh, it goes up to $90. Okay, so $90 day up. So if you go online right now at www.gloriaferrer.com, then you can get a, a deal at um, $75 for your entrance ticket. And so speaking of wine, let's talk a little bit about the wines in our glasses here on the table and some I of the you were never asked. I know we're, we're thirsty here I don't know about you guys I hope you have something in your glass but um, but we're ready to sip the beautiful wines that are displayed on the table and that are in our glass so tell us a little bit what about what's here um, so um, the one that kind of is clear is uh, <laughs> Sonoma Brut which is very close to my heart because it's the very first wine that we ever made that was wow. when we opened the wine and we only had one wine and uh -huh. this was it okay a vintage of this one yes and uh so it's a wine that it's a non-vintage. It's made uh, 80 to 90 percent Pinot Noir, 10 okay. percent Chardonnay, and that is a, a higher percentage of Pinot Noir that a lot of people probably um, think of uh, sparkling wines having. But it makes for a beautiful um, mouth feel, and, and you know the Pinot Noir is such a great, um, such a great grape. They actually made a movie based on that <laughs> yes. great grape. But in sparkling wine, it really brings the finesse and the mouthfeel, and it just, just the aromas is, is beautiful. And what's the general, this is whole cluster, whole cluster press, what's the general aging on this wine? Because I know you, you, know, you have different lengths of time. Yeah. Some of their wines at Gloria Ferrer go up to 10 years before they're yes. released. So. so this is one of the young ones. This is a wine that typically takes around three years from the time we pick the grapes until we get to drink it. So that's the, that's the quick one. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Perfect. I'm glad we get to drink it here tonight. <laughs> Wonderful. So what do you think, you know, talking tapas, tapas are such a huge part of Spanish culture. Why is that? Like, how is it that these little small bites, you know, as opposed to the big meal, became such a, a thing in Spain? So the, the, uh, the name tapa means actually cover. And the, it's, it is said, I know that everybody has proved it, but <laughs> that it, it started in the south of Spain where they are famous for their tapas okay. and where it's also very hot and they often serve, um, you know, when you would order the wine, they would put a little plate on top so fruit flies wouldn't get in. Okay. When you order the sherry glass, which is what they grow in, in Andalusia. And then just so that plate look a little bit lonely and boring, so they would throw a few almonds or a little bit of cheese or a little bit of salami just to dress up the plate. And that became, so Darn. the tapa made I guess I'll have to eat that, yeah. And then that became it. So ever since there's been an evolution of tapas, there's some very classic ones that you find everywhere, and then chefs love to create new tapas. But, you know, tapas doesn't have to be complicated. Anybody can do it at, at home, obviously, sure. and the ingredients you can find everywhere. And it, to me, um, maybe because I'm Spanish, I love the grazing and trying different things right. rather than having a 
a big, big meal. meal. No, I agree. Strong. It's so much fun to just like sit outside at the end of the evening and be able to have like little bits that you can just sort of pick at all night long. And before yeah. you know it, you're full. You're yeah, like, okay, it's a whole meal. I don't need so, dinner anymore. So we yeah. make a meal out of it. Basically, you go right. out for tapas, and you know, traditionally in Spain, you can go from bar to bar sometimes, and almost like a tapas crawl, because mm-hmm. some of them are known for their ham, and another one is known for this omelette, and another one is known for their, you know, fried peppers. Right. So you're going to get the best in each one, and you just go from one to the other, or you just sit down and order a bunch of tapas, and you can, you know, paste them or order more if you want more kind of thing. I love yeah, it. Well, we've got this wine in our glass, and actually I'm going to remind you one more time. Please tweet to at Gloria Ferrer and on Twitter, and we want to hear from you and let us know why you want to attend the Catalan Festival. And, of course, if you have any questions for us as well, we'd be happy to answer those um, for you. But this Sonoma Brut, which retails at $22 a bottle, you can purchase it online at GloriaFerrer.com, um, it really has this um, nice sort of lemongrass and very crisp, um, you know, flavors to it, you know, um, so what do you think would pair the best with a wine like this in terms of tapas? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things with tapas is that you also have a cacophony of flavors, right? right. If you order a fish, right. you may have sauces, but there's, it's very confined, but you're jumping from salty to sweet to maybe some savory to, so um, really that sparkling wine can dance with all these flavors. Yeah, yeah. But I think this one that has sort of a low acidity and has a nice fruit, to me goes very well with cheese, dried cheese. Nice. Like a manchego if you want to keep it Spanish. But and that's also, what we have here, right? That's what the we have here. Okay. But also even like a, a dry Parmesan cheese, which mm-hmm. most people grate in their pasta, but it's a great uh, yes. <laughs> cheese to yes. eat. And even like some aged cheddars. Beautiful. Like anything that has some age will pair very well. And then um, salty things like an olive would mm-hmm. also pair very well. I'm going to have an olive while we're talking, actually. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so what's the next wine in our glass? So the next one is our Brut Rosé, and I would say that's our cult wine. Mm-hmm. That's one of the wines that people come to the wine just for the rosé. Mm-hmm. When uh, now it's different, but when we uh, before you could buy online, we had a uh, we used to have a list of people that we had to call when the next vintage was available. <laughs> well, and, there you go. Uh, and this is uh, I know a, a wine that people just really adore. Yes. I mean, I've heard other people talk about it. For sure. And uh, and rosé is a you know it, to be honest, I mean it's it's a it's. It's nice to see that rosés are now getting, uh, in the last few years, such a good reputation. Because before, when we first came out with our rosé, people were like, ooh, ros- I don't like rosé, the sweet, cold dark, ooh, no, no, right. no. And then we, we sampled, I think, the first six months of uh, when we released this wine, we, we were giving away more than we were actually selling. Yes. And the, but then people were like, oh, this is nice. This is so different. This is actually nice. So yes. now, as I say, it's our cold wine. But So this is 98% Pinot Noir and a beautiful. little bit of Look Chardonnay. So it has a nice color. We leave the Pinot Absolutely. Noir in maceration, so it picks up some of the color, almost as if we were making a red wine, mm-hmm. a red Pinot Noir, and then it gets blended back in. So rosés are the most challenging wines to make, the easiest ones to drink, <laughs> but the challenges to <laughs> And make, it's summer favorite. It is. I mean, really, it really has become but a you, favorite. But, you know, to get the color, you macerate in the grapes, so you're going to get some tannins, and tannin is that dry feeling that you get mm-hmm. in your mouth, which is okay when you drink red wine. You expect Absolutely. that, but who wants to taste that in a mm-hmm. in a sparkling wine? So it's a it's a challenge to say it has the color, but you don't want any of that uh, after a finish. Yes. sort of finish. Yeah. So. Well, this definitely doesn't have that. Um, this is really sort of berries in your mouth, and you know, beautiful, you know, creamy bubble. You know, yeah. almost. It's a Very different. long finish. Yeah. It's, a, it's a wine that has, because it has uh, so much Pinot Noir and the fact that we live in maceration, I always say, like, as you compare to this one, which the percentage of Pinot Noir is not dramatically different. Right. But it's like you crank up the volume. So you bring up those berries, you bring up... It's a fruity wine, but it's it dry. Is, but it is very dry. Very yeah, exactly. Dry. This is not a sweet wine Where at most all. Most people kind of don't it's think savory. that those two can, you can have both things. Yeah. But fruity doesn't have to be sweet, and that's what this wine is. So so what would you pair uh, tapas-wise with this wine? So I think this wine, anything that would, ha- I mean, with fish, with like a mm-hmm. gambas would be excellent. Mm-hmm. With anything a little bit spicy would mm-hmm. also be good, uh, like gambas ajillo, which is a little yes. bit spicy and 
as well as having uh, the seafood. I think with uh, almonds would be good too. Wonderful. And, and we've got some beautiful Marcona some. almonds here. So perfect. And I understand you're going to, you also have some beautiful dates wrapped in bacon yes. and you're going to show us uh give us a little demonstration on um another so very traditional taste. recipe and that would go very well with the um, yeah so let me that let me show you all well. these because they're they look delicious yes with the I'm rosé as one. well because that has is a <laughs> date too on accident. and then it has a bacon yes so you have sweet and savory so that will pick up both the sweetness of the you know the fruitiness of the pinot noir will be picked up by that but then you have the salty at the end so it's um, i'll let you know how it is <laughs> you want to tell us about the so, the tomatoes so the bread, the bread yes so so bread and tomatoes the most classic catalan dish mm -hmm. every time you go to a restaurant whenever we order a sandwich no mayonnaise nothing that's all we get is bread with tomato and olive oil so it's um Bread. Beautiful. And yeah, so let's see, can you all see that here? Should we hold it up? Here. Is this better? Down. Whoops. <laughs> We're losing our bread. This is live, people. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Now you can see it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, then, so this is traditional. So this is the bread and these uh, tomatoes. In in summer you have more options, but in winter okay. the best ones are the little tomatoes, the Campari. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even cherry tomatoes, believe it or really? not. Really, yes, cherry tomatoes. Okay. You have to have a right proportion of juice to seed. Yeah. But um, so you just rub into the into the bread. And oh really? As if you were painting, and you you know you squeeze a little bit so the juice comes out. Perfect. And. You know, literally, it's like you're painting the bread with tomato. I love that. And painting when, the bread. That's perfect. And once it's all red. It's such a beautiful picture, too. It's like you think of red as um, as being very Spanish anyway, that yeah. color. So it's beautiful. So you, you need ripe tomatoes in summer. You have a lot of options. Right, then right. a little bit of salt. Beautiful. And then a little bit of olive oil. And I bought the, our um, extra virgin olive oil that we make at the winery from our olive trees that we have planted all around the, the state. That looks gorgeous. So simple, too. It's super simple. So and simple. It's, and, and it's those not are a piece awesome of bread. It's something right. the bread. Exactly. Ritual. But that's the most classic Catalan dish that every person, even little kids, would know how to even make it. Right. It's right. a comfort food also, you know, when you don't feel so good. Yeah. And then you eat a little bit of bread and tomato and it's like uh, with ham or cheese. Yes, or yes. Ham. But for breakfast I have these most days. I like better oh, savory it breakfast. Wonderful. Like, and a little bit of ham dinner, on the yeah. side or something. Oh, that would be delicious. Wonderful. So um, tell me about this olive oil that you produce at the winery. So this is uh we planted um we have a few trees at the winery. Some of them are Italian varietals and some okay. of them Catalan. The Arbequina is a Catalan varietal. And, mm -hmm. um, and we've been making olive oil for a while. And uh, some, the, the nice thing about the oil that oh, I'm tasting very good is that uh, we also, every time that a person purchases a bottle of, of Gloria for olive oil, they're making a donation to the Sonoma Valley Education Foundation. All oh, the beautiful. funds for the, the profits that we make with the olive oil go to the Sonoma Valley Education Foundation, which is the, the it's an institution, a nonprofit that we have in Sonoma Valley that helps manage the school and the after program and the um, English for second, uh, sure. second language learners and um, and they're also Very the beneficiary important. of the Catalan Festival proceeds yeah. as well. And last year, I believe you donated fifteen thousand yes. dollars to yes. the Sonoma Valley Education yeah, we Foundation. We also have a during the festival we have a, an auction, a silent auction that all the funds go straight to the foundation. So, yeah, we were very happy to make that foundation. Yeah, that that's really amazing. I mean, it's, it's wonderful that you're supporting education in that way in Sonoma County. So, again, if you want to buy your tickets to the Catalan Festival um, for July 19th and 20th, it's a Saturday and a Sunday coming up just a short time away. Things are selling out, so if you want to get that advanced ticket purchase price, log on to GloriaFerrer.com. The advanced general admission ticket is $75, mm -hmm. and um, and if you want to go all out and go to the Bubble Lounge, which I would highly recommend based on everything I've heard here today, that's $90 in advance. Um, and entertainment, we talked a little bit earlier about 
macro, but there's okay. also flamenco dancing. Yes. Correct? So and we flamenco. can learn the flamenco. Yeah, yes. they teach, and then I teach the sardana, <laughs> the Spanish. You do. <laughs> oh, do you, maybe we should have no. to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> I need my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the flamenco actually they perform, but typically at the end of their of their um, their session, they actually bring people on stage and and, and show so them the fun. sevillana, which is the most easy to. Okay. To, and people get totally into it, especially the. Are people yelling like ole? Yeah, and yeah, is yeah. It like you know, people are getting super excited super at the excited. festival. And there's people that already <laughs> actually come dressed as flamenco dancers just in case I they have to go it. on stage. I They're ready it. to go. <laughs> That's so perfect. Well, we're going to close things out here. And um, just again, remind you, please tweet us at Gloria Ferrer on Twitter, because we would be happy to give you two tickets to Sunday's July 20th um, Catalan Festival um, between noon and 4 p.m. Remember, the money is going to a good cause, the Sonoma Valley Education Foundation. We want to see them surpass that donation amount this year of $50,000. That would be really, really awesome. And um, we hope that, well, I, I hope to see you there, because I'll be there. Ava I'll be, will there, be there. And I can teach you the Sardana there, not today. <laughs> and I guarantee there, there's like something crazy, like three different types of paella, or yes. even more than that, you know. And three different types of paella that will be served, and then all kinds of different foods to try, you know. So exactly. It, it, it will transport you to Spain. A lot of people that come to the festival, they tell me they've spent time in Spain, either when they were young, or they lived there for a little bit, or... They have gone there on vacation, and they all say the same thing. I feel like I've, I'm, I'm back in Spain. This is so great. Exactly. And so we want to leave you um, at the end of the show here today with uh, a short video from uh, Macru, Macru. Macru Music, who will be performing Saturday and Sunday at the Catalan Festival. Unfortunately, they were unable to be here tonight. Um, they tried, but it just didn't work out. Um, but we think that you'll enjoy this performance, and um, certainly Ava and I hope to see you there on July 19th and 20th. Remember, at Gloria Ferrer or www.gloriaferrer.com. All right. Have a good one, folks. Salute. Salute. <laughs> yes. Cool. Cheers. <laughs>